Hi, I'm Malika Bilad, filling in for Fit Me OK, and you're in the stream. Today, anarchy. Turns out it's much more than the media stereotype of Molotov cocktails. We dive deep into this political philosophy. Yes, digital producer Dan Ming is joining us on set. He's already looking out for your questions, your comments. Now, I know, Dan, both of us noticed over the weekend there's a divide between Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, I saw a little war going on. On Twitter, a lot of people were optimistic about anarchism in general. And on Facebook, we had a lot of naysayers. So let me just give you a little taste here. On Twitter, Nyan says, Anarchy is questioning any kind of authority and holding them accountable, not taking the authority for granted. That is anarchism. But... He got some pushback. Malik on Facebook says people could never govern themselves. A disaster at best. There would always be power struggles. So, of course, I'm here to get your voice on the air. So tweet us with the hashtag AJStream. And joining us on set is Crispin Sartwell. Crispin is an anarchist philosopher and associate professor at Dickinson College in Pennsylvania. He's the author of Against the State, an introduction to anarchist political theory. Crispin, welcome. Glad to be here. Looking forward to this discussion. Well, our community had a lot to say, as Dan mentioned, about anarchy. Have a listen. Everyone thinks that anarchists are people who wear bandanas and fight with the police. I define anarchism as the abolition of hierarchy. Anarchy is not utopia, but it is a framework for a better world. An anarchist society would be run from the bottom up as a decentralized network of non-hierarchical free associations with direct democratic control over all aspects of social life. If you want a society where people matter, then you should be an anarchist where people matter. Well, anarchists, it's a loaded term that describes people rising up against the state. And around the world, it's a trait shared by many seeking greater freedom from what they see as governments overstepping their power. Recent protests in Ukraine, Bosnia, and elsewhere have been linked to anarchist movements, people organizing against hierarchy and economic oppression for a more equitable society. And while mainstream views equate anarchy to chaos and violence, many who identify politically as anarchists say their aims are misrepresented. So today we want to hear how anarchist ideas are challenging traditional frameworks in government and society. With us to talk about this is Cindy Milstein, a writer and anarchist organizer. She's joining us via Skype in San Francisco. In London, Hi. we have Federico Campagna, an anarchist Hello. writer and philosopher. And in Karachi, we have Waqas Ahmed, a member of the Anarchist Party of Pakistan. Welcome to all of our guests. Crispin, I, wa I want to start with you. What is your definition of anarchism? Well, I, I would... I mean, I guess the official definition is anti-statism or against uh, government. Uh, but I think of it as more uh, an anti-hierarchical uh, political and economic orientation uh, that thinks about the structures of power that we live under and wants to explore ways of releasing us from them uh, and getting more involved in like organic self-organization and self-defense. Uh, in a way that would make a, a more equal world and make it more <coughs> possible for uh, more people to realize their vision of themselves or their vision of for their community. Mm -hmm. Federico, does that definition vibe with, with your thoughts on what anarchism is? Yeah, in part. I mean, anarchism is a very long tradition and is a very wide topic, so it's very difficult also to describe it in a few words. I would add also another thing that anarchism is, um, is, a, is a philosophy and a way of living which emphasizes the fact that the, the possibility of achieving happiness or try to work towards happiness within your short mortal life and the idea that autonomy is important, is indispensable in order to achieve happiness. So the, the attempt of anarchism is to try and create the conditions for autonomy, that is the conditions for happiness. All right, so I actually have a question here from our community, and I want to pose it to you, Cindy. Adrian on Facebook says, to me, anarchy is simply the opposite of hierarchy, a horizontal social structure, decentralized, self-organized, and inherently egalitarian. But um, Cindy, when I mentioned to my friends that we're doing this show, I said we're talking about anarchist organizing, they thought that was a contradiction in terms. Why do you think that people think that the idea of anarchism and organization are mutually exclusive? Why is that a popular idea? Um, 
I think it's a popular misconception, but uh, in general, I think more and more people in terms of all the global uprisings that have been happening are really coming to understand whether um, an anarchistic sensibility of people being able to come up with different forms of social organization, which is really always what anarchism has been asking, is if we want to see the absence of hierarchy and domination as the forms of social organization that currently exist, what would replace them? So what types of social organization and social relationships can we engage in now that strive towards social goodness and a deep sense of direct democracy and participation, um, self-governance? And um, yeah, so I think actually anarchism is precisely organi organization, but a different type of social organization. Well, you, you also mentioned misconceptions and that, that takes us to Pakistan. Well, Kas, is anarchism, is that accepted and understood in Pakistan? What are the misconceptions there uh, about this philosophy? Well, it is uh, not at all understood. It is uh, very much uh, misrepresented by the media. And mostly people are scared of this whole idea. Uh, anarchy to people means chaos, it means uh, no religion, it means uh, there is no order in society. So uh, everyone is b burning buildings and stealing stuff. So that's w basically what people think. And uh, especially for Pakistan, there is a long way to go uh, creating better understanding of anarchy, first of all, and then uh, we think about how we create a social structure that uh, is more closer to anarchy. So, first of all, we need uh, people to understand what it is. So, if, it, if it's seen in that view, do you call yourself an anarchist? Yeah, of course, I do call myself an anarchist. But right now, uh, uh, if you identify as an anarchist in Pakistan, you uh, don't have any immediate threat to you to yourself. So right now, it's safe to call yourself th that because uh, we are considered not very serious uh, in terms of political ideology. We are not uh, considered very numerous, so not uh, a very uh, large threat to the existing system. Is, would you say that that's true for here in the in the U.S., Crispin, or uh, is it seen as more of a threat? I don't know that's, that people are really worried about the anarchist threat. Um, I don't know if the, how focused the NSA is on surveilling the anarchist movement or something, but there certainly are anarchists, and there's serious anarchists, and there's anarchist elements in uh, contemporary protest movements that I think are quite significant. Uh, the Occupy movement and you know various anti-globalization. What are some of those elements? What, what does that mean? Anarchist elements. What, <laughs> what does that look like? Well, I, I'm not. I don't want to like speak for any like Occupy as a whole. I'm sure there are very many different like positions and ideas within a, a movement like that. Uh, maybe Cindy can speak to that a little better than I can. But um, but I think that you know there's an anarchist basic spirit to that movement. Uh, as, as she said, direct democracy and some of the practices <coughs> of decision making that emerged in that movement, kind of bottom up decision making. Um, and then also a, you know, a basic hostility toward inequality that was expressed in that movement, economic inequality, uh, which I think, you know, is really compatible with a basic anarchist vision. Yeah. Cindy, you're nodding your head. Yeah. I Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I would also add, I mean, there have always been people who have understood themselves um, since the time period when socialism and communism and Marxism emerged as forms of political philosophy. There have always been people that have understood themselves as anti-authoritarian or, you know, looking for a deeply egalitarian society. So this isn't, anarchism isn't something new. And in fact, many people would say the practices go back as far as human history because people have been able to figure out ways to self-organize in very um, decentralized, grassroots, face-to-face -face ways. Um, but what's been really unique, I think, about anarchism um, is not only that it brings that very egalitarian sensibility, but it isn't just about a, 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 con a, a form. Um, so it also brings, I really want to emphasize that it brings an ethical content to that form um, in terms of, of things like cooperation or dignity or love, <laughs> um, mutual aid and a deep, deep commitment to allowing everybody to become who they want to be. So um, in terms of what it brought to Occupy or what it's bringing to um, some of the global uprisings, it isn't simply that it's about direct, just simply direct democracy because you can have fascists organizing face to face. What it's about is a deep sense of whether you're you know, queer or a person of color or um, a female or 
whatever brings you to these things in different ways or or, or concerned about the natural world um, that we have a a compassion and empathy and a tolerance for each other and try to figure out how we can coexist mm -hmm. together in ways that allow for that um, everybody to express who they want to be. So, right. so I think what anarchists yeah. did in the Occupy movement was bring that not only the forms of organization but also bring kind of an ethical sensibility to it too, a compass. All right, Cindy, actually, I have a follow-up yeah. question for that. Sorry, just one second. Federico, Federico. we'll get right back to you. Yeah, so Wojtek yeah. on Twitter tweets in, here's a question. He's asking about scale. He asks, when does an anarchist community become too large for direct representation to work? So we saw this kind of movement and organizing with the Occupy camps, but was that the scale that works for this kind of direct representation? What do you think? Can it be implemented on a large scale? Well, what's beautiful about this current moment is people all over the world, not just in terms of Occupy, but the last 20 or 30 years has been this really interesting, sort of since communism and capitalism have shown the bankruptcy of those systems in terms of meeting people's desires and needs and the beautiful world they want to live in. It's been this emergence of people kind of getting together, taking over physical space by the tens of thousands and millions and looking at each other and going, huh, how do we want healthcare to work? How do we want to take out the garbage? How do we want to run schools? How do we want to feed each other? And people have been figuring it out in ways that you could say are anarchistic, which does not mean it's going to be an anarchist society. It just means that people have been trying to figure that out directly. But what this points to is they've done it on pretty large scale bases pretty quickly under intense repression. Um, so that these experiments to me are the beginnings of how we could think about how people could do that. And the key to how people think about scaling up but keeping things non-hierarchical is forms of federation or confederation where decisions end up being made by the people who are impacted by them but people have forms of very horizontalist or as grassroots as you can ways of interacting to make sure that you know a one community is, feels good about the decisions of another community. The Zapatista autonomous territories have probably been the most interesting experiment of late where for the past 10 years or so they've been having a very sort of nested web of decision-making processes that that have um, decision-making processes on the very local level of neighborhoods to communities, villages, to confederations of communities together. Right. So, um, so, so people I, I, I want to spin sensitive. off because I think what you're saying is really important. So I just want to make sure that we're clear. I want to spin off from this horizontal interaction. And, and Federico, I know that y you wanted to get, get jump in. So I want to pose this to you. Um, it's all very well and good to say that there's a collective kind of what should we do about schools? What should we do about child care? But I'm um, taking you here to my screen. This is on Reddit. Now, there's a very popular subreddit, reddit.com, the aggregating website on Anarchy 101. Lots of different questions. Uh, some of them that pop up, uh, what protects an anarchist population from imperialism? And that also begs the question to me, what do you do in, in, in a society uh, when someone is not acting in accordance to what is for the social good? How do you punish them? Um, b before, if, if I may, before answering that, I would like just to add one thing to um, what was being said before by Cindy, which was very much to the point. And I think I would like to add just one, uh, one element to that, which is the anarchism, in fact, is what currently also keeps, um, keeps the world spinning, in a sense. You can find anarchism in the organizations of the Occupy, or in the more uh, spectacular forms, but you also find anarchism every day in, your, in most of your relationships or friendships and loving relationships with, uh, which are not abusive. Um, that, for example, what, uh, what we achieved in, uh, or we are struggling to achieve in a way in terms of reforming um, loving relationships or family relationships uh, has tried to um, make, <clears throat> make us understand that it's possible to be together as a, as a loving group without necessarily having to um, to subscribe to a to a higher ideology such as that of the family, but simply out of uh, of a mutual of a mutual love and mutual interest in a sense. So, anarchism is something that you encounter every day, uh, and has something to do with a, a pure, in a sense, and beneficial form of self-interest and egoism. That is, is possibly the only true form of individualism that is exists at the moment. But going back to the the question on on, um, on Facebook, how can you how can how can an anarchist community defend themselves? Well, Cindy was mentioning the Zapatistas, um, but there's many other examples in the past. You would have had, for example, Ukraine, um, the, the Republic of Makhno, for example, the, the anarchist experiment in Ukraine in the 20s, or the, the Spanish Republic in the 30s. Anarchists have fought regularly wars 
unfortunately not very successfully out of um, some sort of technical problems, mostly in that time. Um, the issue of violence should be discussed by anarchists, of course, but unfortunately most of the time it's an issue of, an, of how to protect themselves from violence rather than whether to use violence or not. The depiction of the media, which is uh, that of anarchists as innately violent people, is, is totally incorrect. Of course, when you are attacked by a much larger, much larger force, you have two main, two main alternatives. One is to organize and try to fight on the same level, like the, like the Spanish anarchists did in the 30s. And the other, if you are entirely overwhelmed, is to vanish. That is, to go to a sub-level. That's something that is described not as anarchy, but as the anarch. Um, and that's a, an entirely different solution, which, um, which very much applies, I think, to contemporary societies. The world Fe in which Federico, I'm going to stop you there because you mentioned several really important things. One of them was you said violence is something that is often um, uh, from an outside lens put on to this anarchist movement. Of course, that leads us to this conversation that a lot of people online are having. People are talking about violence. Yes, we have we have some genuinely curious questions here. We have a video comment from Mikey in California, and I'd like to play it and then I'll, I'll pose it to Crispin. Here we go. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Mikey from Southgate, California. I grew up in a parochial school environment, so my education was very biased. So my question is, is it true that anarchists are all about the violent takeover and overthrow of government? So Crispin, what do you think about that question? He, this is what Mikey's presentation of anarchy was, a violent right. overthrow of government. Where does that come from and how do anarchists, how do anarchists respond to this? Well, uh, I mean, it, there, it's not that there's no historical sources for this, okay? Uh, and uh, the anarchist movement in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and specifically, some elements of that movement uh, engaged in all sorts of violence. In fact, I think even the term terrorism may have been coined uh, to deal with some anarchist assassins and so on. Uh, an anarchist shot William McKinley, for instance. Um, now, on the other hand, however, uh, there have been many pacifist anarchists of various kinds. Leo Tolstoy is an example. Uh, and I'd say, you know, throughout the history of anarchism, the question of violence has uh, been controversial. And what, are the, what means do we want to try to pursue in order to achieve this vision of a, of a better world? Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't think that most people who identify as anarchists now uh, would regard themselves as like ultra-violent revolutionaries. I mean, I don't think in most parts of the world we're in the middle of any kind of violent revolution. Uh, and people are, and, and I'm not sure there'd be a lot of hope for such a procedure. Uh, so people are doing the kind of things that Federico was talking about, which is, you know, resisting to what extent you can in places you must. Um, withdrawing into uh, voluntary communities and uh, sustaining communities to whatever extent you can avoid the uh, inter interference of the authorities and so on. So, I, and, you know, I think the association of anarchism with violence partly had to do with anarchist actions of various times, partly had to do with various, you know, state propaganda uh, about anarchism as well. Well, yeah. and delving into that I, association, can I, can I inter oh, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I think that is such a, a stereotype that is mostly been used to discredit um, anarchism versus it being a, a huge part of its history. For most anarchists, for most of anarchist history, anarchists could be seen as some of the most peace-loving people because what they're, they really take seriously is the question of how do you deal with conflict and people coexisting without forms of force, whether those force are coercive, through words or the pressure of losing your job or your home, or whether the force is wars or militarism or prison. So anarchists are really concerned with the question of violence, but the violence that they're concerned about is the state. I'm, I live in the yeah. United States, which has the largest prison system in the world, and if you don't call that violent, the number of people that, that die under that, or militarism, and the U.S. is, you know, we don't need to go into the U.S. in terms of how many millions and millions of people the United States and other nation states have killed. Um, Sydney, and if, so I could, if I could just... The question, the question to come down to the everyday level is anarchists spend a lot of time figuring out how do we deal with conflict in ways that are better and more humane? And so do we have the answer to always solving you know, anarchism not becoming another form of domination or, or hierarchy? Nobody has the answer to that. But anarchists always look at everything 
with a nagging suspicion of, huh, is this a new form of coercion emerging or a new form of hierarchy? And what they do is they come up, mostly what anarchists do is spend a lot of time in all sorts of social experiments and individual and political experiments of trying to do things differently in better ways that allow us to be more human and compassionate toward each other and loving without forms of hierarchy. Of and, and Chris, man, I, yeah. well, our community would agree Again, with uh, most of what Cindy yeah. is saying. There are people who are mentioning the word black block. And I, I pulled up yeah. on my screen some pictures of the things that come to mind when people, yeah. you know, when, when they talk about anarchy, you see balaclavas, you see uh, okay. uh, uh, violence, really. These pictures are from demotics.com. So yeah. is that inaccurate? Well, I, I wanted to uh, pick up on one thing that Cindy was talking about, which is the violence involved with the state. Okay, which is uh, exponentially uh, the most violent force in human history. Okay, so if you look at the 20th century, the world wars, for instance, all the genocides of the 20th century, the killing fields, the Holocaust, uh, Rwanda even, these are state actions, okay? Um, and the idea that the political state is there to prevent violence is one of the most absurd assertions and I mean it's, it's an insane uh, falsification of the actual essence of the state in violence which is expressed devastatingly in history the tunes of tens of millions of dead people uh, now I don't know mu that much about the black block uh, I don't think it's probably any kind of real organized movement or something um, and I don't know how much violence they've really perpetrated. Uh, people are throwing stones, maybe, or Molotov cocktails. I think uh, often in very difficult situations, say in Greece, for instance, uh, as the economy broke down. Um, you know, so I, but I don't think there's any organized violent anarchist mm -hmm. faction in the world. Really, well, I will like say, that. people online were tweeting us that Black uh. Bloc is, is not, uh, it's an action. It is not a group, it is not a movement. Well, Kass, I know I want yeah. you wanted to get in. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because when we talk about violence, I think we are getting ahead of ourselves because uh, I don't remember any uh, violent attempt uh, on part of anarchists to take over the state or take over the government or any organized violence uh, perpetrated by anarchists any time in the history specifically to take over the state. So right now we talk about uh, violence, the government, uh, all governments, they basically have monopoly o over violence. They have this huge machinery dedicated to violence. They have police, they have mil huge militaries, huge expenditures. All states have that. So I don't think even if anarchists want to violently take over uh, a state, they are in any position to even try to attempt that because that will be crushed immediately by any state. So it's not realistic on part of anarchists even consider that and for people to say that anarchists might attempt that it's it sounds kind of silly yeah, <laughs> that yeah, sounds yeah. Well. Be, i think i think what would be more interesting is to get back to anarchists have a really lovely toolkit of what is diversity of strategies and tactics look like or experiments and why i've been so moved by all the movements taking over plazas right now in history is because it's not just the state anarchists have never just been concerned with the state They've been concerned with capitalism and the state have been the two um, key pillars that anarchists have opposed and organized religion. But again, anarchists really have said, let's look at forms of hierarchy, domination and oppression and move toward a society that has increasingly has the absence of those and what do we replace it right. with? So well, Cindy, our strategy, Cindy, that's, that's actually a really great question. What do we replace it with? That's exactly where I want to go mm -hmm. in the post show, Dan. You have a ending tweet for us? Yeah, so um, again, Kirion on Twitter says, in terms of policing, how would it work? Do we still have court systems? What would the first year of anarchism look like? So I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about that in the post show. Because we're just getting started. But stay with us. The post show is next at stream.aljazeera.com. Run to a computer, log on. You're not going to want to miss this. We'll see you online.
Welcome back. This is the Streams Online Post Show. It's just heating up. We're talking about the principles of anarchism. So let's get back to that discussion right before we ended the main show on television. You were reading us a great tweet, which yeah. I noticed a lot of people asking that same question. Yeah, there's what was a it? lot of curiosity about what anarchism would look like in practice on a state level. So Federico, I want to ask you about this. What do you think? What would the first year of anarchism look like? What would anarchism look like? Yes. Um, well, anarchism is not really a thing, a bit like the black bloc. Um, anarchism is, is a method, is a practice. So I can tell you how anarchism would structure things rather than looking like. Um, the, the, main, the main element of anarchism is, uh, and probably the main object of its violence, because there is some violence in anarchism, and that is not directed against human, other humans necessarily at all, but rather it's directed against the, the very concept of in the name of. In the name of, wars are started and people are slaughtered. In the name of is the idea that something is worth more than human life, that the country, um, the country, the family, God is worth more than human life. That is the, the object of the uh, violence of anarchism. So uh, an anarchist society is a society that is built together in order to provide people, its members, with benefits, with things that they couldn't have on their own. And that is the only aim of an anarchist society. The interesting thing is um, to, to ask ourselves what is actually the aim of our current society. If the, the aim of our current society is to provide us with things that we couldn't get just if we lived alone on top of a mountain, probably the answer would be no. So um, an anarchist society is, is, a, is, is an idea of restructuring our interactions, not in the name of something, not the idea that we should live, live and stick together because of the similar color of our skins, because of our similar um, religious ideas, but simply because that's the best for us to live a happy and autonomous life. So that's what it would look like. And the interesting thing is that this, um, this truly atheistic approach is what is often claimed by capitalism that is by today's, con uh, the, the current society. Capitalism claims to be individualistic, capitalism claims to be beyond the state, anarchistic, um, a proper atheist enterprise. But there could be nothing more false than that. Capitalism simply replaces the shackles of the state with completely new ones. And in terms of policing, which is the pro also one of the issues of the, uh, that were raised by the tweets, um, it, it does without the police, some of the police of the state, not really, but uh, it does a little bit. But what it, what it does, it enforces self-policing. The idea is that there's no better policeman than the policeman you have in your head. That's something that a 15th century writer called Etienne de la Boissy defined as voluntary servitude. And that, once again, is the object of the violence of anarchism. Anarchism Enrico, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm actually going to have <laughs> okay, to look up fine. that name on Google what, what, after this. Uh, one thing I might mention, I mean, I, I think anarchism does have a problem sort of designing a future, telling you what that future would be. Um, I, a lot of anarchist political philosophy has resisted the utopian project of, uh, you know, designing in detail a future economy and stuff. Uh, what we're more Why is that? well, we're more interested in releasing people uh, to creatively respond to their actual situations. You know, uh, so you know, unlike Marx or Plato or somebody like that, uh, we're not going to be able to tell you how people will live. Now, there have been many practical experiments in anarchist economy and in anarchist self-policing in various uh, ver various ways. Um, I mean, I've written about uh, quite a bit about 19th century American utopian experiments in like labor exchange economies. Uh, there are alternative models, but the most I think an anarchist can say is, well, try that on a local basis, you know, see how that, if that creates a viable situation. I'm not going to say, well, this is how the world will look after we've redesigned it, because our whole shtick is we, we're not designing it. Everybody is designing it together. Right. You know, that's what yeah. we want. I really, yeah, I really want to follow up to on that. that. Go ahead, Cindy. Anarchism is a really, anarchism is a really, really profound belief in that we're all have inherent worth, and the world around us has inherent worth, and together we can figure it out. And I think again, I really want to point to um, anyone looking at any of the plaza takeovers, whether it's in Greece or Egypt. Um, in the United States, Canada, we can name all sorts of uh, Spain, all over the world where people have just grabbed public space. They've instantly started looking at each other and trying to figure out ways to provide the things they need and desire in ways where they're doing it. And part of the reason those moments feel so, if you've been part of any of them, they feel 
as if you're alive in a way you aren't in any other moment is because we really realize that when we turn toward each other we can there's someone who's excited about doing most everything and the things we're not excited about we can kind of figure out together how we're going to do them so Cindy so there's a, again a profound belief in self-determination self-governance self-organization and I, I don't think any anarchist would say oh yeah we're gonna have a new society in one year and this is what it will look like but we're saying let's move toward okay. a world where it isn't defined by things that are power over us but power together right. and so, what would that look like so Cindy I have a follow-up question here from Facebook David writes anarchy is unsustainable simply because it assumes that no leadership will arise from it once leadership arises a government of some kind forms even tribes on isolated art islands aren't anarchists because they have a hierarchy so I wanted to ask about your experience in these Occupy camps does a leadership arise? Is it is it inevitable or how is it avoided in this kind of organizing? I mean people taking leadership over things they're really excited about or good at isn't if they don't have power isn't the problem. What's the problem is when leadership implies the ability to coerce or force others to do what you want them to do. So I really want to point to that. So sure some people took leadership and they were really excited about what would it look like to cook meals for everybody on a daily basis and they were excited about that and that was cool and other people took leadership in a process that would allow everyone to try to speak together and then we'd constantly revisit why it wasn't working. So I was part of Occupy Philly and one of the most lovely, we had general assemblies all the time, we're together every day, we would, twice or once a day we would come together to decide crucial issues and one time that was the most poignant was there was a group who had decided to set up outdoor, you know, port -a toilets um, so we could have a place in a, a public plaza to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And they came to us and they said, oh, we're having trouble figuring out how to keep them clean. And we spent like two hours really seriously grappling with the question of how do we want our, our society to look where everyone can feel good about it and clean and safe and our needs are met. And while it seems like a simple, ridiculous example, it actually was one of the most beautiful moments where people really took seriously everything that includes the whole of life and not think that it's someone else's job or a demeaning job or something someone's forced to do for money. So I think the ways we can really understand anarchism is again in the everyday practices as was pointed to earlier and one of my favorite examples is libraries. Like we walk into libraries and we can suddenly have a different relationship with the world where out of pure curiosity we can borrow things and use them and get value out of them and give them back and we're glad to and share Cindy, them And Cindy, of course, others. that's not just yeah. happening okay. in, in, in the real yeah, world, it's well, happening yeah. in the virtual world as well. Well, Kos, yeah, talk to us about technology yeah. And, yeah. and the role of that. So we, uh, when we talk about anarchism, we are assuming that there's going to be a year zero of anarchism, that there's going to be some point in time when some, someone declares an anarchist society is about to start. That's not going to happen, and I don't think that it's realistic to think that way. So when we think about the anarchy, year one is now. You can start right now, and you can bring about an anarchist system in your own life. For example, we take the example of open source movement. It has been going on for a long time, and what it means is basically developers, programmers come together and create something new. Uh, great software is being created by communities of programmers and uh, not by central corporations. For example, co that co competitor to Microsoft, there's uh, Linux and uh, it competes very well against uh, Microsoft and uh, Apple. So how is that happening? Because uh, a huge community, worldwide community of developers has come together to create something new for the community. That's amazing. How uh, I might, uh, we, we, we might mention Wikipedia too as another example. Probably, yeah, the, exactly. probably the greatest exactly. reference work ever created by human beings. And the community uh, self uh, directed. Yes, exactly. exactly. I was about to mention that. Yeah. So, so people um, like us yeah. get to create new, new things. And it's, uh, it, these systems are basically anarchist systems. We're not uh, thinking of them that way. So we see order emerge out of Wikipedia, we see order emerge out of uh, Linux and other open source uh, projects. We see someone uh, centrally take responsibility of the pro project and everyone gathers around the person or that yeah. small organization, that collective group of people. So we see order em emerge everywhere. So if you want to start something you can start something right now and there is going to be a community that you just have to foster and it's yeah. going to be an anarchist system. Well Kos, I, I love that you ended that by saying that if you want to start something you can start something right now and unfortunately yeah. we're almost out of time but I want to give yeah. all of our guests one more line because this question comes to mind is there a way as Wakas was just saying um, to integrate anarchist ideals with our current state institutions and I'll start here with Crispin is there a way to merge those two things? Well I think uh, as several people have said like 
any area of our lives that is not filled with pervasive coercion. Uh, any place where we're voluntarily associating on the web or at the library. Um, that's an anarchist site potentially and so w what we need to do is think about those when they're successful and grow them if we can. Cindy? Yeah, I was going to say growing is really beautiful. It's what is a dynamic look at that where we are moving ever more outward from those forms of self-organization to contest the places where we can't do that. I always say in a nutshell to me, anarchism is what does it look like to increasingly move towards social goodness or a society where free individuals and freedom can coexist and increasingly moving toward that. So anarchism is antagonistic to forms that aren't like that. It can't, it can't just kind of cozy up to the state or capitalism, which takes those beautiful forms of free software sharing and tries to privatize them and commodify them and hold them for power. Anarchism wants to push out that and say, no, it's all for sharing and caring and up together doing it and increasingly figuring out ways to do that together. And Federico? Yeah, well, I just wanted to add a comment about the discussion on leadership before as well. Um, just a just disclaimer. Well, we only have 30 seconds left, so it's whatever you say will be your last word. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, the anarchism is not a, a, a fanatical cult against leadership. It just tries to um, create an efficiency of leadership, minimize it to what is necessary. And in the same way towards the state, uh, it's not necessarily a, a fanatical cult against the state, but it tries to understand what is useful in social organization. That is, anarchism, you can say, is welfare without the state. And uh, what cost, what cost your for. last word? Okay, yeah, the government is going to leave a lot of gaps for you to do something. There is going to be a lot of things that you can do, so you can start doing them right now. Bring together people, that, that is anarchy. Bring uh, a couple of friends together, think of, of, of uh, an idea, uh, find out a problem, solve it. That is anarchy. So you collaborate, you contribute, everyone is happy. Uh, that is basically Every, anarchy. You everyone don't is happy. Well, class, I'm, I'm going to have to end it there because that, the that, that literally was the perfect way to end it. Are there any thoughts from the okay, community? Okay, last tweet from the community. We asked, do you think there is growing support for anarchism? And the response we got was, very much so. Anarch Anarcho-populism like Occupy has led quite a lot of people to even more radical politics. I think the message is, watch this space. It's growing. I like that message. <laughs> well, thanks to our guests, Chris Van Sartwell, Cindy Milstein, Federico Campagna, and Wakas Ahmed. And as always, the conversation continues online at hashtag AJStream. See you next time. Thanks for watching.